Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. It is Luke and Mark, Eric and Mark here with you beauties for the final preview of the 2023 season. It is the World Finals. It's T1 versus Weibo, and we are going deep in the pool for this one, looking at every single matchup. It's incredible. You rewind the clock. Nobody saying that we're getting to this point. You'd be insane to say that it's T1 versus Weibo Gaming at the beginning of the year, the middle of the year, so many points of this year. It'd be insane to think this is the finals that we are getting, but here we are. And yes, some juicy, even if it is a favorite in T1, you know, right out of the gates, we can say that one pretty comfortably. Still some juicy matchups and some counters to be considering when you do go through lane by lane in this matchup. What's wildest with both of these squads is at their lowest points this year, you were worried about them making playoffs, let alone sitting here as the last two teams standing on the calendar year. Incredible. Incredible. And you're right, because you had various moments with T1. Of course, the biggest one with Faker having that extended absence from the team away uh, with his wrist injury. We didn't and know if he'd be look- back in time for Worlds at all. We, we, you know, we talked about this. There was serious consideration of, look, maybe you just shut it down for the whole year. Take this as a last year, come back next year type of thing for T1. Last year, my caboose, they're in the finals. This is the way that T1 does it. And even Weibo, all the fluctuations up and down. You had the excitement of being the team, the only team really in the LPL. I mean, screw BLG. They could never get it done against JDG. Weibo Gaming, they could get it done against a titan squad like jdg but they also couldn't keep it together against a team like thunder talk gaming all the way through in the lpl yes crazy to think these are our finalists it's a coin flip every time for um weibo whenever they hit the rift but lately it's just heads 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 and here they are all the way to final seeing if they can draw another heads first matchup to look at is i mean it's hard to pick what the most important one is in this set but maybe the most explosive might be Zeus versus the shy these are the two guys who have been at the forefront of we will destroy this top lane meta top lane is not useless because both these guys have taken over multiple games especially in this best of five round and it has been a resurgence, a return to form for both of these top laners to talk about. Starting with Zeus 4T1, he has been a player that, you know, I think a lot of people looked at the performance last year, specifically in those finals against DRX, and said you needed more. You are a player capable of giving more to this T1 organization. We have seen that this year. We've seen him be relatively stable or at least one of the most stable options while faker was out of the lineup and since faker has returned we have really also seen that gauge turn back on for mr zeus in the top side last series busting out the yone really taking it to three six nine in that top side he's gonna be ready for mr the shy on the other side and it's it's hard to pick what's gonna be the spicier lane in terms of picks when you're looking at bot lane and what kiri has been cooking up all tournament but the Shy was just playing Graves and Quinn. We got the Yone out of Zeus, as you mentioned. Aatrox and Rumble, probably going to be the two most contested picks in this head-to-head matchup. You know both of these guys are going to have some counter picks ready. Blessed that we've got a top lane matchup where I think we might escape from these finals without a Cassante signing. We might be able to get through with it. Yes, the Aatrox, of course, the both of them, very well known for playing that champion. The Yone that I just talked about. The Rumble, that's the big one for me that I am keeping our eye on. We've talked about this one, various points of this tournament, seeing its power. These are both premier Rumble players. You would look at Zeus, he'd be getting the hoony thumbs up for the way that he plays Rumble. And of course, we know the Shy. That is a hot flame spitter that he's got when he's rolling on that champion. And this is maybe the one matchup. I mean, it's going to get more bleak. If the Shy's playing as well as he did in some of those wins against BLG, your bare minimum, even in this top lane matchup, maybe the ceiling's still slightly higher for the Shy, but we know that the basement for the Shy is, uh, it's about two floors underground when he's not playing at a high level. Yeah, I think the thing that's going to be curious to see in this uh, matchup and focusing in on the Shy 
is going to be looking at that difference between him and Zeus, where the Shy sometimes has taken that back seat for the rest of the Wavo squad. He's rolled in on that Orn pick that we have seen in this tournament and maybe not look the best individually or not look the best in his matchup, but certainly had his value for the team later on in the team more importantly, had his back and raised up their performances to push Weibo across that finish line. Yeah, for all those spicy top lane picks, do or die season on the line, it was that Orn. In the game five scenario for the Shy. So close top lane matchup. The current form the owner is in, it's hard to see an avenue where you're given way, uh, way, way the advantage in the jungle. If you're Weiwei, if you are Weibo Gaming, you need to identify this mismatch, this level up that owner has had for T1 and identify and target it in pick ban. And we're going to have to talk about that a little bit later. Pick ban is going to be an extremely valuable and important tool for Weibo Gaming to keep themselves in this series, to find their little edges, their little avenues to get it off balance so that they can actually go toe to toe with T1. That starts in the jungle for me, banning out things from owner. We've seen him look really good on the rel, even better on that Jarvan. And then I think he has not quite shown the level on anything else yet at this tournament still. I mean, pretty good game on the poppy. I'll give him that too. But you look at those and you try to identify that this is a player that is rolling with that hot hand. You got to find a way to slow him down. And he's fresh off of taking down the probably two highest rated junglers coming into this event. Embarrassed Tarzan, kind of embarrassed Kanavi in a couple of these games as well. So yeah, he is fully on these engaged support or engaged junglers, as you mentioned, as we've seen him pivot away from these carry junglers as the meta has kind of dictated that. But how many times have we watched owner just walk up and smite a dragon or sometimes even a baron where obviously there's some disrespect from the opposing team letting him get to that point but this guy smite key has been absolutely deadly he is on a war path for last year my man he wants to make sure he's securing every single one of those objectives getting those smites down if you're weibo gaming if you are weiwei i am looking at that maokai pick for you you have been able to utilize it you've been able to pressure with it find those setups the engages everything else you look at it on that flip side i don't think t1 has utilized that Maokai pick to its full extent, the right type of way where you are getting the maximum from his ultimate and everything else. You got to be looking at that one, I think, in the jungle as one of these picks that can sway things for yourself. Then we get to the matchup, the iconic seven year plus rivalry in the mid lane. We're used to it being RNG versus SKT. First time Weibo Zhao who has matched up against Faker, but. Mark, if you include 2019, where T1 went 2-0 against RNG in the group stage, Xiaohu has been eliminated by Faker four out of the six times he's ever attended the World Championship. I was going to say, you know, think of the World's Finals like sitting down at a nice family dinner, and all of a sudden you're looking at all these different matchups, all the different dishes on the table, and you're seeing some strange ones. You haven't seen Zayus versus the Shy before. You don't know what that dish is, what the taste is, and then you look over. There's the comfort food. There's the mashed potatoes. That is Faker versus Xiaohu. And I think Xiaohu's saying, I don't like that dish. I hate it. Get it out of here. Because so many times, you're right, it is the dish that takes him out of the world championships. Three world championships versus three MSI titles. We're about to see who's got the better skills. Every time Xiaohu eats that dish, he gets, uh, he gets food poisoning. But I don't know why I keep coming back to it time and time again. Now... I mean, this is as recently as Last Worlds, the T1 3 0 RNG, but this is a totally different Weibo roster. Xiaohu isn't in that peak form heading into his first ever World Championship Finals, where obviously Faker kind of secured that series with some engages on the Azir. I feel like, and we kind of talked about this a bit, going back to pick ban, do you really take away these insanely comfort picks for Faker, he shouldn't be allowed to play Azir a single time in this series, whether that's Xiaohu picking it up or they are banning it away. Same with the Orianna. These are picks this guy's been playing for almost 10 years. Azir, Orianna, Nico. Those are the big three that he has been playing quite a lot recently. You can even go back into the LCK and examine where Gen G 
attack T1 and pick and ban and identify, okay, we don't want that familiarity, that standard for someone like Faker giving you that stable platform to build the rest of your team off of. That's something they, they identified. They took it away from him, put him on stuff like Silas, you know, a little bit off and still, I think that that is enough of a threat. You got to consider that for Weibo and you got to think in pick and ban how you're going to find these edges, how you're going to find a way to try and close. What is that expected underdog gap that you've got between yourself and T1? Starts with that pick and ban. I think one of those is examining that Gen G route of attacking fake or trying to put him on something else. I think right now the form of T1, it's too risky given how good the other members are, given how lethal the other options and creative the other options in the meta that T1 has shown they are comfortable taking out and taking out your Nexus with. That's the problem for me with doing that against Faker. Xiaohu should be looking at that Azir, of course, the Orianna, those are ones for him. I'm looking at that Tristana, still a little bit outside the meta, of course, but one that we did see relatively recently. I think that's one of those ones you gotta bring something different, gotta find an edge to shake up what will be this series. If if you are Weibo, I'm watching all these Gen G matchups against T1. I'm dissecting every minute of that VOD because for the last three months, basically since that playoff run started for T1, Gen G's been the only one who's done anything against them. So obviously they were doing something right. If I'm Weibo, I, I got 16 pages of notes from those series. And I mean, unfortunately, when you do look at those series against Gen G, some of the time you're going to just run into the answer being it got all the way to silver scrapes. And the only difference is one player stepping up and being that difference maker, right? That's where it's going to be. And I think that's kind of the challenge for this Weibo gaming is you're going to have to realize not only do we need to step up and, you know, kind of shorten that gap type of thing. Someone needs to be that one that pushes over that gap and be that difference maker to make us better than T1. Faker. You can look in the mid lane. Faker, Shahu, could be it. And let's be honest. Faker, the bigger the match, the better he seems to play. So mid lane, current form heading into this, the fact that it's the finals in front of a home crowd, Edge is going to Faker 100%. When we go bot lane, you know, these are the two highest KDA. By the way, I think T1 has the best KDA in every position coming into these finals. Just note that. But light right behind Kumiyushi. Light has probably been the most consistent ADC of the tournament. Really hasn't made a single mistake. I think there was one int moment that he had, but he had redemption within the very same game. He's been so incredibly consistent. The problem is Guma's mojo is in another stratosphere right now. And his confidence after just beating up on Ruler has got to, it's reached another planet at this point. Flat out, we I don't think we've ever seen it at this type of hype and this type of level and arguably deservedly at this type of level. I don't think we've ever seen it for someone like Gumayushi and what he has been able to do, how he has risen up for this T1 roster. Yes, Suri, this is going to be one heck of a, a, a war in the bottom lane between these two because Light has stepped up for Weibo Gaming. At this event, he certainly has been a little bit more reliable, a little bit more consistent with that damage and having a bit of those pop-off moments that you got to have from your ADC at this event to make sure you got that firepower to contend with these top-level teams. You saw that in that crucial Game 5 on that Kalista, making sure that it is Weibo heading into these finals. That's something that you're looking at on the other, on the other side. There's just so much in the favor of Guma because you say, yes, Light has leveled up and that's good for you. You were still probably somewhere in that top five of ADCs in the LPL. Guess what? I've just knocked down arguably two out of the top of those th in the top three of the LPL. What do I care about what Light's going to offer against me? I mean, that's the mentality. That, I mean, Guma's probably going to say it's something exactly like that in the <laughs> teaser for these finals. But we've seen the Caitlyn Lux out of Light and Crisp completely destroy Fnatic, we've seen it have a huge impact in pretty much everyone they've played it against. That matchup is the most exciting thing for me because you know, if we're talking about it, Kyria and Guma are talking about it and how they're gonna counter it. If there's anybody that's got a counter built up for that one, specifically a counter that we have been seeing quite a lot at this tournament, AKA double ADC mega push bot lane. I think it's going to be T1 that is going to be very comfortable and comfortable enough to bust it out here 
at the World Finals. Yes, that is one of those matchups. And I think as we move into then talking about the support partners that add up to these bot lane players as well, is going to be where you tr still, you're up in, you're up top if, if you're Weibo Gaming. But unfortunately, it only gets harder to see given the bot lane an advantage when you throw in that Kyria versus Crisp matchup. And you know what? Crisp had it fantastic, especially Renata game against BLG. He's been a little inconsistent at times throughout this tournament, as the whole of Weibo has been, pre-knockouts at the very least. But Kyria has, there's no argument for, I mean, there's plenty of argument for who the second best support at this tournament has been, but absolutely no one in the right mind is going against Kyria or Guma for that matter for AD carry, which means, boy, that is that is some tough sledding for Weibo in the <laughs> bot lane. If you're voting against Kyria as the best support at this tournament, I got a bard ultimate waiting for you to keep you frozen in time, my man, because you can't be going out there with that disrespect. The way that Kyria has played at this event, he is without question the best support playing, the best performance, and he has got to be the one taking an edge into these finals, even if Crisp is rolling on through with that world championship on his side. It is still got to be all about Kyria. When you're looking at it, though, you got to find where the differences are. We did the same thing looking at Faker and Shahu, where the difference in that champion pool is. I'm looking at the Melio. That's got to be the one that I have seen on the side of Crisp and utilized with not only Light enabling him, but the rest of the team later on has been a big factor for Weibo Gaming. That can be an edge, something that you use to your advantage. On that flip side, it is that Bard. It is Kyria on Renata. It is the double ADC bottom lane. T1 can bring any... Uh, Senna, Nyla rolling on through the Tom Kench, whatever. T1 has got it covered. They've got it cooking. This bottom lane is almost a done deal. Triple AD carry comp with the Milio. That's the secret sauce for Weibo. <laughs> Little Quinn top for the shy. Tristana uh, mid for Jahu. And we're taking over. So you look at this preview as a whole... We just gave an edge to T1 in every single lane, except top lane if the Shy has a really solid performance. So outside of T1 getting overwhelmed by the moment and maybe not playing to the level we've seen, how's Weibo winning this? They got to find that edge. You got to find that angle that throws it off, right? Changes things up. Whether that is going to be how you attack and pick and ban, what you choose to let through pick and ban type of situation you're gonna have to roll the dice is how i'm seeing it with weibo gaming because right now you stack things up front to front even to even you're not even to even it is t1 taking that advantage and they will take that nexus and take the world championship if you line up that type of way you gotta disrupt if you're weibo gaming finding a sig signature pick a pocket pick that swings things around changes the way pick and ban shapes up that's got to be the avenue for me. I'm The reason I'm feeling confident in this T1 is they don't seem stressed. Going into these finals, Kiri is laughing about new jeans being there. They're doing the coin toss for pick, uh, for pick side. Faker's smiling the whole time. Even when they lose and he picks blue, it's like he's sitting there like, perfect. Just where I, we want him. I will say flat out, good that Weibo did win that coin toss because I think if there was ever going to be any chance of the upset, it, it has to start with Weibo getting blue side. We have seen how strong blue side has been. Again, you're going to hate me for this, Weibo fans, but there's the counter from T1. They have been arguably the best team at this event on red side. The one that has been able to disrupt that blue side dominance. That's going to be the tough part when you're thinking about it as well. Either way, a historic end to this world's whichever team ends up winning. Faker picking up number four, Jahu picking up number one. The storyline has written itself. Scriptwriters, another beautiful performance here for 2023. Got a little bit of offseason roundup to get to because we're getting a bit of a Mad Lions reunion over on Team Vitality. We saw Hillisang came over and we said, well, what the heck's the rest of this roster looking like? Well... Karzi said, Hilly, where are you going, brother? Okay, I'll follow right along with you. I'm going back to Vitality. No bad memories here. And we're bringing Coach Mac over with us. I I swear, I we were talking about Hilla saying, and I thought, wouldn't it be funny if, you know, Karzi, uh, LinkedIn, oh my God. Here we are. This is what it's happening. Yes, it is. 
2.0 Karzi and Hillisang in that bottom lane. And once again, for these uh, for these Vitality Bs, they're rolling on through with it. And yes, bringing on in through from the Mad Lions, Mac in as the coaching staff. This is going to be uh, certainly the retooling that we expected to see come through for Vitality. Maybe not the expected avenue and players type of thing. I want to keep in mind the positive angle in this one and look at what we did get from Karzi and Hillisang the last time out. A handful of weeks where they were one of the top options in the bottom lane of the of the LEC. You could see, you know, the crazy mad scientist of Hillisang alongside the wacky engage and, you know, all out there-ness of what Karzi brings to the bottom lane. It worked for a couple of weeks. And then we saw it fizzle out and we saw it answered by the rest of the LEC. So that is where you're going to have some questions to prove to the doubters in this little bit of time. Two more LCS rookies looking like they're locking up starting spots. SRTT on Evil Geniuses, who's been a mainstay in the Academy system. And Meech, disguised most hyped up crown jewel, starting for AD carry for 100 Thieves, which means double lift is likely out. Who knows where he'll end up. But eight rookies already, and signings aren't done. We might be hitting double digits. And I think that this is an equal combination still of budget restriction and maybe a hope hopefully thinking here a little bit of hopium copium reactions to what we saw last split in the lcs players like insanity rising up and showing his value what we saw with nrg not only domestically but at the world stage as well is hope is the hope that i'm bringing in for these rookies coming into the scene for the lcs srtt is certainly one that i think you can go back and you can look at how things went for evil geniuses academy and say this is a player that is deserving of a chance of that next step up, you know, wherever it's going to be. So happy to see that one fall through. And then, of course, Meech, as you said, disguise toast. Let's bring some of them boys into the LCS and very much a hype, an expected bump up to the LCS for him. There's no question we're entering a new era in the LCS with all these budget cuts. And we've said maybe this is a blessing in disguise going back to the roots for the squad. This is the beginning Maybe a lot of these rookies aren't going to live up to the hype. Some of them don't have very much hype. But either way, in the long run, think this is going to be better for the development of the LCS. Even if maybe the first split or two, it's looking a bit rough, guys. It always looks rough internationally, whether it's rookies or not. So new era for the LCS coming. Finals over the weekend. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on that flippity flip.